All right, let's get some insights of the news shaping the markets. And for that, we welcome in Rebecca Walzers here, president of Walzer Wealth Management. Thank you for being yes, here. Yes, thanks for having me, Paul. So how are you feeling about the market? We'll get into some of the different specifics, but what jumps out at you? Now? I mean, obviously, this news of Russia and Saudi Arabia really keeping the cuts going. And, you know, I think that uh, Mohammed bin Salami really, really wants to see uh, crude at $100 a barrel for the projects that he wants to do economically. So you're really seeing the block OPEC plus clamp down and say, hey, even if demand weakens globally because manufacturing purchases, everything, you know, dropping, Nicole, we're going to keep it artificially inflated by cutting production. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely at least part of it. We've had this run up. These are the highest levels, uh, since, you know, of the, of exactly, the year, right? Exactly. Since last year. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we're nine days in a row on oil and pulled back, I think, a little bit yesterday. Yeah. But, you know, 90 is right there. Right, exactly. Uh, to your point. But, you know, that'll be an inflationary pressure that will translate at the gasoline pump. Exactly. Um, in the meantime, the labor picture, we know we've had a tight labor market. But what are you thinking? I mean, what is the Fed watching now? I mean, what will they do in September? Well, I think we're going to get a pause in September, Nicole. And I think we, but I do still look at Powell's comments in Jackson Hole as very hawkish and obviously he's really relied on the stalwart of labor to be able to do these aggressive raises and now we're starting to see a labor picture that is softening we're not seeing as many job openings as decline we're actually not right. seeing the same wage growth that we're seeing for the people that are out there that are returning we're actually seeing labor force participation going back up and what that tells us Nicole is that savings are running out and credit cards are getting topped out and people are done with stimulus and they actually have to get back into labor force so participation rate going up is actually yeah. why it ticked up on the inflation number yeah that's right I mean you have uh, young people out there they're trying to look for jobs. And if they have credit card debt, it's upwards of 20%, yes. right? We said that's uh, over a trillion dollars. Exactly. People are really um, digging into savings, using credit cards, even hardship for the exactly. 401 case. And Nicole, now we have five billion that's coming next month and re student debt's re re you know, restarting. That's five billion a month that is not going to be able to sit on services and retail goods. Mm -hmm. So that is going to be an additional. And of right. course, you know, the Fed is also rolling off $95 billion a month by letting MBSs and, and treasuries mature without replacing them. So we've got a lot of liquidity crunches coming. So at this point now, um, do you think that the Fed, so if you think the Fed skips in September, yes. what about November? I think the October 31, November 1 meeting, I think we're going to see another raise, unfortunately. But mm -hmm. I, unless, barring some right. tragic economic news between now and October 31, I see Powell's comments as indicating that there's not enough consensus to keep the pause. And, and, and we are going to have higher for longer. That's the, in the parlance yeah. now. That's what we're talking Let's get to some specific sort of stories. I mean, you don't have to necessarily comment on the stocks, but I mean, we've had Apple under pressure, you know, down over 6% this week, right? I'll have to double check on the latest yes. number, but um, you know, government there in China, at first it was don't bring your uh, Apple to the meetings and, and then it was no government buildings, no Apple anywhere, yeah. you know, leave it home. Nobody's gonna have an Apple iPhone anymore exactly. if they're not allowed to use it. Exactly. Um, what do you think what's going on here in tech in a name like Apple? You know, it's obviously Retaliatory. It's interesting that it took so long for Huawei to actually, you know, and and for China to crack down on Apple, similar to stance to what Trump did with Huawei. And I believe this is a complete retaliation. It's also some things going on with Foxconn and Apple in China, diversifying supply chains, building a 200 million facility in India to create, you know, AirPods. You know, even though their joint venture just really kind of fell through with the chips, we know right. that they're trying to diversify from China. So that does doesn't make China Apple's biggest fan right now, Nicole, and that's yeah. really what's happening is diversification away from China and supply chain diversification. Yeah, and with Apple, I was looking to see where it was. I mean, it was at 177 when I looked earlier this morning. Right now, it's at 178, and some would say, you know, it just it was 198. I know, um, I know. And not that long ago, in the yeah. middle of July. So when you see these kinds of pullbacks on Apple or any of the other names, do you say, and look, we're going ahead of the iPhone 15 launch. But, exactly. But sometimes there's actually selling on the news on the uh, Apple day but do you buy on these pullbacks well you know it's interesting with Apple I think it's a really unique case because China has been their growth projection for the last several years China and India right. so if you're seeing China really come hard against iPhone and Apple then you you've got Apple saying wow this could be a strategy play that we haven't anticipated and now we're gonna have to redivest and adjust and they're not prepared for that because Apple is definitely has looked at China as their growth trajectory 
So I think it's hitting Apple especially hard, Nicole, because of that specific reason. So what do you tell folks when they want to put some money to work or are you telling them to take some profits? I mean, I do still think that we're over we're overpriced right now and I do still see an economic yeah. pullback, Nicole. I just don't think we're gonna get out of this without a lot of problems. But I certainly if we have, you know, movers and shakers that are underpriced and then we see a, a, a move on, we can definitely take that move. But macroeconomically in the next six months I see a lot of volatility and I I really uh, think we're going to buckle up our seatbelts. Yeah, I was at uh, an event last night and talking to one of the money managers and he said, well, we put, just put so many hedges exactly. on the bets that we're making. Exactly. I mean, are you finding that? I mean, that's exactly it. The only way I think to, to play equities is right now is, is with stop losses, is with hedges, is with options because you, we just don't know how when this could come. Yeah. Right? We're expecting some kind of economic disruption and it could come any moment from anywhere. Geopolitical risk escalation, um, BRICS not announcement of selling crude outside of U.S. dollars January 2024. I mean, anything could be coming that could really disrupt this yeah. very fragile and very narrow recovery. I mean, if you look at the S&P, if you look at NASDAQ, if you look at it's not that many, Nicole. It's not broad-based and deep. It's very few players that are really performing well. Yeah, it's great to see you, Rebecca. Thank, Thank you, you so much so for much. being here. Rebecca Walter, Walter Wealth Management.